Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this topic, we want to have an introduction to data structures and algorithms. Uh, you've ever used a Google map and when you search for a particular destination, you give it the input, which is your current destination, then it will be able to look at the best path uh, that will guide you all the way to your destination. So by the end of this topic, we should be able to understand how Google achieves this using data structures and algorithms. Other than that, we should understand what a data structure is and what an algorithm is. We should also be able to understand the importance of data structures and algorithms and how especially big tech companies uh, use them. We should also be able to understand the common types of data structures and also the common types of algorithms. Lastly, we should be able to uh, look at a few examples, as I mentioned, of how it is used in the industry. Okay. So in our daily lives, we find ourselves looking for something, searching for something. For instance, we might want to find here a measuring cup or let's say a spoon. So how easy or how difficult do you think it is to find uh, a measuring cup here, particularly a quarter-sized uh, measuring cup? What if we organized that particular drawer like it is on this picture? Then how easy will it be or how difficult will it be? You're right. We want to access the quarter cup measuring cup we can be able to find it very fast so that is why data structures are important we want to organize and store data in a way that we can be able to access it very fast now i know this brings your high school memories back these are the kind of struggles we used to go through in order to buy bread in high school but what if there is a better way of doing it. For instance, in some high schools, we have representatives that will pick the bread of loaves, then go and distribute or sell them to particular groups, for example, particular classes. Do you think this is more efficient and we use less energy and we save time? The same thing happens when we organize data correctly uh, in computers. Now, what is an algorithm? Now this little girl here is trying to cross the road. She has to look on the left, look on the right, and if there's no car that is close, then she's going to use uh, the zebra crossing to cross the road. This is one of the early algorithms that we learn in life, maybe at kindergarten. So an algorithm really are the steps we take in order to solve a particular problem. For example, the problem of crossing a road. Computer algorithms are no different. They are simply step-by-step -step procedures that are designed to solve a specific computational problem. In our daily lives, we cook, we follow recipes, and recipes are good examples of algorithms. For example, here in Kenya, our favorite starch is ugali. And to cook ugali, step number one, you have to boil the water. Once it's boiled, you have to add the flour. You stir continuously until it becomes, then you have to serve it, um, for example, inefficient it does not take a lot of time or it does not take a lot of space so that is scalable as the input increases how is it affecting the efficiency of the program in terms of space and in terms of time then it has to be deterministic uh, i'm trying to remember what this uh, means 
but uh, uh, let me give you that as a reading assignment to read uh, on that, on why an algorithm must be deterministic, just escaped my mind. Then it has to be independent. This is also important. So an algorithm is not a computer programming language and is not associated with any programming language. For example, here we are going to be implementing these data structures and algorithms. And this is the same, by the way, applies also to data structures. So we are going to be doing this using Python, but you can do data structures, you can do algorithms using any programming language, including C and C++, which you've already learned. Then it must be robust. Robust means that uh, uh, it must take care of any eventualities. So we're going to learn about uh, things like the base case. For example, if you want a person to give you an ID and you don't want it to be zero, an ID cannot be zero. So you have to check for things like, like those. Uh, you have to check for uh, 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 a case that will end uh, so that you can, an input device, very important. Then we are going to use algorithms to compute and make sense of this data and other mathematical calculations. Math is simply pure algorithms. And after that, we are able to make some data out of it and visualize. For example, for the month of uh, August here, it was sunny 10 days. Uh, so this is called a weather chart, something I learned recently from my daughter's kindergarten uh, uh, activity. Uh, so they have a weather chart and every day they put a sticker on it to, uh, to, to see whether it was sunny or to represent whether the weather that day was hot, sunny, rainy, windy, etc. So this is exactly what a computer does. And that is why data structures and algorithms are a key point in uh, computers. Because just like we, we, we do searches every day and we want to find things fast, computers also store data and they want to start, find it and process it super fast when we want to access it. Now, an algorithm must have zero or more inputs so that is important that the input can be zero or more so let me just write that so zero or more inputs so always remember that then an algorithm of course must have an output so this is these are the two other characteristics of an algorithm must have zero or more inputs and must also have some output. Now, uh, if you look at this particular structure, uh, which one is the shortest path to travel from uh, point A here to point F? You do that by just adding the numbers. So let's go. Uh -huh. So there you go. So the shortest path from A to F is from A to B, then B to D, then D to F. So we've simply added 6 and 3 and 1. We also added A to C, which is 5, plus 8, C to D maybe, plus, which is more than uh, what we've had in this other path. So that is how we find the shortest path. And this is an example of an algorithm that is used by computers. It's called the Dijkstra's algorithm. And you know what? Actually, Google Maps use the Dijkstra's algorithm to implement. It uses the Dijkstra's algorithm to find you the shortest path. So as we said, an algorithm will have some input. Uh, so we've given the input as uh, these two, as our inputs. Where we are, 
and where we want to go. So what the algorithm will do is that it will create all possible nodes. For example, that is Ogata Rongai. The next junction is Galeria. At Galeria, you can either go back to Karen so that you follow the Ngong Rescos way, eh? then you go to Junction Mall, for example, then you go there, then you go into town. Or you can just follow after Galeria, we go to uh, Uhuru Gardens here, uh, through Langata, and then to Nyayo. And so this is exactly how uh, Google Maps uh, 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 does a graph. So it's, it's, this is simply a graph. So you, you have that, you have that, you have that, and we have different weights for these graphs. So it's simply going to add, look, look, just like the graph we had earlier. Eh? So this is exactly how Google Maps calculates the shortest path. Now, that shortest path will be calculating, calculated depending on other, uh, other features, for example, traffic jam, yeah? uh, for example, distance, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, so that can be more efficient. But the point I need you to understand here is that Google Maps actually uses the Dijkstra's algorithm to find the shortest path. Now, one topic that I've taught for a long time in data communications or computer networks is called OSPF a topic I love a lot. Uh, it's called the Open Shortest Path Fast. Now, OSPF, OSPF also uses what you call the Shortest Path Fast algorithm. SPF, which uses Dijkstra's algorithm to find the route that is going to follow to the destination. Depending on the speed of the links between the routers, for example, so each one has a particular weight. Uh, uh, and also the traffic. So this is what we call a link state. And this one is what we call the user defined. So this is what we call the user. User defined. User defined uh, either. You can call it data structure or data type. Then these ones are system defined. Uh, so that is integers, floats for storing numbers vector. String for storing multiple characters which really looks. These type of data structures are also called abstract data types. So I want you to read more about this. What is a, an abstract data type? So that's another reading assignment I'm giving you over there. Now, non-primitive data structures are, have static, static data structures and dynamic. We call this static because uh, it has fixed size. So the size is determined during compilation. Now, what data structure is an array. So when you create an array and it's of uh, size five, an array to hold five items, you cannot change that size. So that is why we call it a fixed static data structure. On the other hand, dynamic data structures that is nonlinear is called a tree. And a good example of a tree is what I've used here to show you about the different types of data structures. So this is an example of a tree. So a tree will have nodes and each node can have uh, children. So you see, for example, here, the parent is non-primitive here then it has two children, linear and nonlinear. Then the linear one has two children, static and dynamic. And then static has a child array. So this is an example of a nonlinear data structure. It's called a tree. We also 